Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Monday live stream. My name is Shane Olson, and today we're going to be sculpting this fun little dragon fellow from Alexander Kaida. Not sure how to say his name, but uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. Another Monday. So let's just get get on to it, shall we? Okay. Sorry, just want to check something. Okay. And hopefully this is a rockin'. Please let me know. If it is, hey, what's up, Neil? How you doing today? All right. Hopefully you can hear me okay. What's up, Mark? Hey, Brad. All the familiar faces. Welcome, welcome. Forgot that I updated. I updated my ZBrush and Redshift, so we should be good to go to good to go today. <laughs> my uh, my my symmetry should be working as expected today. All right, Thanks, Unity. So um, the story with this little guy is uh, I've been I've been really fascinated with his work recently. Um, some of my students in the past have modeled some of his stuff. And uh, I just really, really love the colors. This is from a larger piece. I'll show you guys. Um, so it's from this piece here. This Mother of Dragons. It's just this one dragon right here that I thought was super cute. So, um, yeah, this, it's, it's just, <laughs> I, I love this, this, uh, these characters and the colors and they're, they're they're 2D without being completely 2D. They have some some depth and volume to them, but they're they're very uh, very flat, two dimensional. But they have some nice uh, gradient tones. I would love to model this guy. He is so great. This little <laughs> this little goat goat out there. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's what we're doing today. So welcome, welcome. Hey Leonard, how are you? You know what? I need to get some music going. I have these headphones on and I'm listening to nothing. <laughs> let's get let's get it going. Hopefully you guys can't hear it. Okay, we're good. All right. So, let's get rocking, shall we? All right. I'm trying to let's assess this guy. I think I'm going to show you guys how I how I break him down a little bit. He's a, he's a, kind of low res, a little fuzzy, but that's okay. So I'll grab this select lasso and kind of break it down. So we have his body, right? That's about this shape right here. It's kind of a bean. And then we have this, just this tail hanging off the back that we could incorporate into the body block out. Then we have his head. Um, I'm probably just going to make his head in one big piece, uh, possibly two since his mouth is open. Um, and then we have his horns, of course. Um, and then these arms with these fun little fingers on the ends to uh, block that out like that. And we just have his little feet. I don't know what his toes look like, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna check that out. Okay, waiting to test negative. Yeah, how's how's the week been, Leonard? Doing all right. It hits it hits people different ways hey Rudu, I think I've uh, I think I've done a Pokemon in the past I'm trying to remember if I've if I've sculpted one or not okay one second there we go just taking my shoes off like Mr. Rogers <laughs> okay hey Havad how are you okay So this will be his head. Go ahead and squish that down this way. Squish it in this direction. And that's pretty good. I'm gonna subdivide it once. And delete my lower, duplicate it. I'm loving you using you remesh by union after watching you. Awesome, that's great to hear. I love remesh by union. It's it's one of my favorite new 
things that I've found. It's kind of been the biggest, besides blocking things out with primitive objects, it's kind of been the biggest game changer to my workflow in the past few years. Okay. I kind of want to bend this thing too. Um, so a really quick trick, a really quick trick to bend something. I mean, you can just use the the move infinite brush and just kind of bend it physically in space. Pretty much done on last week, Monday. Some lingering. Yeah, it tends to like your your cough tends to stick around for a while, which is no fun. So, well, I was going to bend it, but I decided to do it with the brush instead. <laughs> hey, Rebecca, how do you have that hand? It's just an overlay in OBS um, using something called uh, Spud Arm. So it's a hand that I, I modeled and rendered out, lit, rendered, and then, uh, yeah, put it in there. <laughs> oh, hey, now you're on you, on Twitch. All right. Okay. Let's get this uh, tail happening here. <laughs> now we're no longer gizmo. This might go faster than I want it to go. <laughs> so if it does, maybe I'll model a different, another dragon. Hey, what's up, Eric? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> the other day, my daughter got an ad for, uh, like, what is it called? Uh, digital currency what is that called in her fortune cookie <laughs> i was like what what you got an ad for like do dodge dogecoin in your <laughs> it wasn't dogecoin but something like that yeah those of you that are new here um i give away all of these brushes and this user interface for free over on my website which is 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can check it out right here. And you can learn how to make characters like this in a full, complete course. There's actually several courses in one, if you think about it. Cryptocurrency. Thanks, Leonard. Yeah, she had a cryptocurrency ad in her fortune cookie, which was unfortunate, if you ask me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Have the tail. Let's bring these legs in. Yeah, just like that that rock chuck that I made not too long ago. That one went really really quickly. I'm almost thinking this one will be a similar speed because it's quite simplistic in nature. And it looks like these legs go and wrap all the way up around the back kind of weirdly. It's after five and I don't write fortunes after five. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's awesome. At least it's good sense of humor, huh? <laughs> That'd be one to keep. Okay. Were, were any of you watching uh, Anna Carolina's stuff before this? What? I think I just broke the symmetry on this. Let's do a mirror and weld again. Sure. 
Okay. There we go. Somehow that got out of out of symmetry. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> Yeet the end guns. I love it. <laughs> Welcome, Dave. Okay, let's do the get the arms in there. So how's everybody doing anyway? It's been a whole week. <laughs> whole weekend it's I know it's it's Monday it's Monday okay on this one I want to bend it about here well let's make it the right size first by smoothing this down just kind of integrating it into his back a little bit more um can you tell us about the redshift in this new version how we can use it and that other stuff so it's funny you ask Havad, because um i actually did an interview with the maxon people specifically talking about redshift and uh neil would you mind i don't know if you can post can you post links on youtube by chance um, anyway, if you go to Maxon's YouTube channel and search for my name, which is Shane Olson, um, you should be able to find my interview and I talk specifically about Redshift, a whole a whole thing about it, walking you through uh, how to use it. You can't, okay. So Neil cannot post to YouTube with links. Um, let me see if I can just find it really quick. Okay, here we go. So it's this. I wish I could give you the link, but it's, uh, yeah, design stylized characters with me. So if you find that, um, I go into uh, talking about how I rendered out these characters with Redshift. Okay. Because I typically don't get to rendering during my streams. Okay, let's bend these arms down and up a little bit. Okay, now what I want to do kind of right away is um, I want to get these feet in here and kind of turn this. I'm 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 actually wanting I'm thinking about like merging these already just so I can start to integrate the the arms legs tail into the body really quickly. Yeah, let's do it. Living dangerously. Here we go. Let's save it first. That's always a good good idea though. Okay. Saving, saving. Let's call this. Okay, thank you, Leonard. Yeah, um, so we can post on Twitch, but you were not allowed to post links on YouTube is what uh, we were getting at, Leonard. But thank you very much for those of you on Twitter. There you go. Or Twitter, I said Twitter, Twitch. They're both TWs. You got suspended. You've been doing bad things over there. Mm -hmm. 
Also, have any of you been playing Hogwarts Legacy by chance? <laughs> hey, well, there, there you go. I was just talking about it. Yeah, that's... Uh, Yeah, yeah, I don't want to get into that, but I'm talk but as far as the actual game goes, um that's my old studio. That's where I worked on uh, Disney Infinity. Um so I'm super proud of all of those who worked on it. A bunch of my friends worked on it. And uh I can't believe how well the game turned out. Super cool. Yeah, that's that's uh that's crazy they suspend people for that. I guess you can't talk about it. That's dumb. Okay, so I'm actually going to go, I'm just looking at the negative space between this arm and this leg and how close these are. I'm going to try something here, just like, just squish that right up in there. So yeah, after Disney shut Avalanche, they didn't shut them down, but after they shut down uh, in Disney Infinity. Um, they sold the studio to Warner Brothers, which was great. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, a whole bunch of my a bunch of my friends worked on that game, including one of my best friends of all time. His name's Alan Too. He's the lead designer on Legacy. Um, I've known Alan forever, since 19... 98, I want to say. You know, it's interesting you say that, Neil, because I'll have to dig it up. But when we first started, because I was there in the very, very beginning of uh, of Legacy. And, you know, before it was even called Hogwarts Legacy, it was just the next, another Hogwarts game. I was still there and we, we did try and do a stylized version of that. And... Uh, Warner Brothers decided they wanted to go more realistic. And uh, that's I think that's a, a small part of what made me decide to move on. Just because it's just not my thing, you know? But uh, I think they did a really good job with it. I've had a... I've been having a blast playing it. It's really fun. Let's see. Now this is really interesting because <laughs> the... Uh, the eyes really wouldn't work this way. If you look at this eye, you would see that eye in his mouth, right? So um, we're gonna have to just cut it off and pretend that, that it's good. <laughs> okay. And okay, I wanna make his belly fatter. It gets a, it, you know, honestly, I think it gets a good 10 out of 10 for me. It's, it's that fun for me because I'm a, I, I've read the books to my kids and uh, I used to listen to it when I worked at Incognito, the audio books and yeah, it's just been a big part of my life despite the, the controversy or whatever. You guys only knew. <laughs> what I know about that whole thing. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't have a leg to stand on. Um, at what point do you start dynameshing your, I don't dynamesh my models. I use, uh, you'll see, but I use uh, Sculptress Pro these days. And this sounds like a jerk answer, but um, when you, and I use uh, something called Remesh by Union rather than Dynamesh and Sculptress Pro. And, um, the answer to when should you like combine stuff or join stuff together? Um, the jerk answer that I'm going to give you is when you feel like you need to do that. Um, there's not a specific point in time where it's like, okay, now merge, you know, it's just. It's, it's, and you don't have to merge everything together all at once. Yeah, Leonard, <laughs> ain't that the truth, right? In fact, I'm going to merge the tail and the body together right now. So I don't want to merge the rest of the stuff. 
And Neil, remind me, can you merge stuff without splitting it into different subtools? I'm trying to remember, does it work across masking? Does it respect masking? I can't remember. I believe it does. Okay, well, let's just save it and try it. If you're ever unsure, save it and try it. Well, you know, it's, I wish it was a little more linear than that as far as the process of the whole thing goes, but it's just not. It's like my old art director from Avalanche, his name's Jeff Bunker, he used to say art is messy, and it is, it's just messy. And there's really not, it's not a tried and true thing. You don't just go, okay, and go, you know. I should I should stop and show you this masking trick. I showed you guys last week, but I'm going to show you again because it it's kind of hard to get into your brain. <laughs> but um, I I only want to mask out this body, and I want to add the tail to the unmasked section. So I'm going to hold down Control uh, with Gizmo showing. I'm going to hold down Control, click on the tail, drag it towards the body that used to be unmasked, and then hold down Shift at the same time and add it to my selection and then let go. Okay. Um, now that I have this, I want to go put my gizmo in the middle of the world, which it's clear down here. It doesn't have to be down at home base, but it needs to be in the center if you want to uh, join using mirroring. Okay. Then you just click on this gear and click on remesh by union right here. Um, which it just stitches things together. See that nice stitch we have right there? Now just say, say accept. And now what I like to do is kind of flood fill this with uh, Sculptress Pro Geometry is what I like to call it. it it's it's kind of shares some uh, similar, uh, some some familiar topology as Dynamesh, but not quite. So yeah, it does, it does tend to keep the sharp lines. When I merge the arms and legs uh, using Remesh by Union here shortly, you'll see that it does keep these uh, super sharp edges where Dynamesh will melt them together. But I do want to melt this edge. So uh, that's why I usually I try and keep the two objects uh, overall density similar, but you can see that this tail is a lighter density than the body which we get some weird stitching happening across here, but I don't mind because we're just going to uh, flood fill it with Sculptress, okay? And if you see this polygon size right here, that's just borrowed from, it's called, uh, it's called, gosh, why, where's my brain today? I'm gonna go down here and it's called Tessimate. That's why, because who, who uses the word Tessimate? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tessimate, and it's just this slider right here. So, um, yeah, I need to turn on. I need to turn on symmetry because it, it just turns it off when you use that. But uh, this Tessimate, I can grab this slider and drag it down. You just, just want to drag it down just a little bit. But the original mesh will stay in the cache. So... You can keep sliding it to the left and it will kind of bring back what there was before. And you keep going until you get a density that you're happy with. And this kind of matches the density of the head. I'm happy with that. I'm going to put it all in one poly group as well. So I'm going to click uh, in, I'm going to invert the mask and then hit Control W to put that whole thing in its own poly group. Okay, and now I can continue editing and smoothing, relaxing. There we go, let's crank this up so we can nice, nicely smooth it. Get rid of those warbles. And we can also just solo this to look at it closer. Okay. See Toad in the back? What are you talking about? In my, like Toad from Mario? I don't believe I have a toad back there. The po 
Holly. What are you talking about? I don't have Toad. <laughs> Those are Disney Infinity characters. And here, I'll show you at a bigger screen. Are you talking about Toy Story? Or this alligator right here? <laughs> yeah, it's not Toad, but close. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to Sculptress Pro at the same time too, just to kind of get a little more density happening. And you don't want to have dynamic turned on for this. And it looks and that's okay. I'm I'm kind of flood filling these legs and stuff too, and that's okay. It just kind of it's it's kind of like uh I equate it to painting gesso on canvas. It's kind of like gives you a a, a solid sculpting base to sculpt on. The back of you are doing? I don't understand. I'm sorry. Okay. So I I, I kind of want to put that little th those little fat rolls in there. There's one here and one here. So do a BST, just a standard brush. I hardly ever use this brush, but <laughs> sorry, Zemo. I, I wish I understood what you're saying. Oh, looks like I need to turn on adaptive. I really need to install that. <laughs> Take my own advice and install the quick. Whoa. Too small now. There we go. Maybe a little smaller. Okay. I know it's kind of like having to explain a joke to someone. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder if that's small. And then one more down here. Why are you using Sculptress Pro instead of just Dynameshing with bigger resolution? Um, because I like to not run out of geometry. And, and sometimes I like to have denser areas and lighter areas, depending on how much uh, detail that I use or that I have. And I like to use Remesh by Union because it doesn't melt my mesh. Like uh, Dynamesh tends to melt your mesh together. Or Sculptress does not. Okay, let's do... Uh, I kind of want to get his eyes in there just to have a reference. Let's turn Sculptress Pro off. You can have more dense areas on your model instead of doing the entire model. Yep, that's that's what Sculptress Pro is for. I used to use Dynamesh in my workflow, but ever since uh, Sculptress Pro came out, I've changed my workflow.
Let's see. I need to split. Where are you split? There you are. Are you? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to give Dynamesh a bad rap. It still has its place for sure. And I used to use, uh, I used to use Dynamesh in my workflow a ton. So, you know, I've taught, I've taught ZBrush for, gosh, how long has it been, Neil? I, I want to say four years. And um, the first, the first two or three years, I just taught Dynamesh. I still have that in my course. I'm just using the move brush to pull these brows up. Four or five years, yeah. And I think I've used the, the Sculptress Pro workflow for the last, what? The last year? Has it been a year so far? Hey Caesar, or David, I'm not sure which. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the stream. Okay, I'm just going to pull this forward and kind of uh, give me that smile line that I'm looking for. Seems like you have more control of the final outcome. Um, it, yeah, so again, I don't have to think about geometry at all. I mean, not that you really do with Dynamesh, but again, with Dynamesh, what happens is when you, when you have to continually Dynamesh over and over and over again, as you work, um, it become it's, it, it just starts to shrink and melt your mesh over time. And that's not what I want. So. That's why I kind of changed, changed my methods. Okay. Stylus in the screen is actually quite annoying to watch. Sorry, Dan. Um, a lot of people enjoy it because they can see exactly where my cursor is. I, I've uh, kind of polled people. And some people like it, some people not so much. A lot of redundancy cleaning up the detail you had yeah so yeah you have to you have to go back in and re um like redo your your creasing and redo your pinches everything that it went and melted when you dynamesh you have to go in and redo it again when you're done How did you do the hand thing? It's really cool. Um, yeah, see, there's an example. <laughs> some people like it, some people don't. Uh, it's just an overlay in OBS. So I modeled this hand. It's, a, it's my bear's hand. And then I just use a program that does an overlay that tracks my, uh, tracks my cursor. It's called Spud Arm. If you want to check into it. <laughs> Your hand's so weird. Yep, and there's another vote for against, I guess. <laughs> Can't please everybody. That's all I can say. A 
Okay. So for this mouth, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the mask and pull in method. Uh, do you feel that the market for stylish realistic and realistic modeling sculpt is too different, or is it not easy to change between both? It is. It is. Um, it's it's semi easy to change between both. Um, like realistic characters are more about um, like you have to spend more time on the texturing phase and realistic proportions and things like that. It takes a little longer time. Um, but stylized characters, you have to be more design oriented, cleaner. Where realism, you can kind of cover up with textures. It's a bit weird, but you get used to it. I mean, I can, yeah. If I turn it off, I'll use, you just, sometimes you don't catch where my, and is come on I'm gonna pull it quite a bit quite a ways in there see there you can start seeing his eyes I obviously didn't make his mouth close enough to his eyes so let's fix that Try it again. Unless you got a 28 inch screen or bigger. <laughs> you watch through your phone, it's nice to see. Cool. Yeah, I, I wonder how many people watch on their phone versus a computer or tablet or something. Okay. kind of got a turtle 55 inch <laughs> huh. watching on a desktop and I'm on team bear arm <laughs> uh. okay let's try this again You'll see the eyes more. I'll just have to clip them off. If you're not streaming, how long would this creature take you to do from start to finish? Um, about about the same. Probably just a, a little quicker. Yeah, it does look like Squirtle. <laughs> That's what I was just thinking. Kind of a turtle mouth. I've always used Dynamesh to clean up the mouth details after moving. I guess you're going to use Sculptress. You're right. Yeah, just need the shell, right? <laughs> okay, so yeah, see I, I stretch these polys. Now all I have to do is just kind of clear the mask and then just hold down shift with Sculptor's turned on. And just go in there and add the detail. Um, I'm on my phone only because I'm in a food coma for lunch. <laughs> but I too like to be able to see what you're clicking. Nice. Hey Gambit, welcome. Uh, on production, a character like this as a hero character, how long could it be? Just the modeling phase. Um, you know, again, it depends on the detail of the character. If it's this exact character, uh, probably three or four hours, if I were to guess. Or more, depending on polish. Okay, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and squish these eyeballs down. Using clip curve, clip curve will take the geometry and squish it rather than slice it like that. Looks like I got a, I got a hole in my mesh. You better get that looked at.
Um, I I really can't talk about it too much, uh, Malu, but I'm not. I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly, but um, I am enjoying it immensely. That's all I'll say. Okay, so to fix this hole, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror the hole to the opposite side. Okay, and then I'm going to do a mirror and weld, and that will get rid of it. Um, sometimes holes just happen when you're using Sculptress Pro. And you can either use close holes, which works, or you can do what I just did to fix it. Turn on dynamic on these eyeballs so they're a little smoother. Um, why not use trim curve? I could. Um, clip curve has a flat overhang. Uh, yeah, I could use either one. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I think it's just kind of a natural tendency I have because I've used tr trim curve for so long. I, yeah, I just use it. Okay. So now we have this. Uh, let's kind of pull, I want to pull his nose forward. What does it look like when the eyes are squeezed? Oh, like, you want to see the geometry? It looks like this. I just basically put the geometry and slammed it up against that line. Sorry, Mr. How are you showing your hand model? Um, oh, it's just, it's just, I'm oh, getting a lot of questions about it today. Sometimes I, ha I get hardly any, and sometimes a lot, and it's totally fine. Um, it's called Spud Arm. It's just an overlay in OBS. Okay, so let's pull this out. That really looks like a squirtle. Um, you can get Shane's interface and brushes for free. Yep, indeed. Now on this, I kind of want to push it back up in there. Okay, so at this point, I want to add a bit more geometry just to get some more detail in the lips. So I can go to um, Sculptures Pro and just turn down the slider slightly and use Smooth. And you can see it just adds density in the areas that I want it, like around these eyes. And I just kind of like to flood, just kind of fill around this the face area all the same density in case I want to smooth. So smooth will um, ch change depending on your density. So um, like for example, see the two different densities here. If I were to smooth right here, sometimes it creates a weird, well you can't really tell with this material, but sometimes it'll create a weird surface detail that you don't want. Oh, it's because I had Sculptures Pro on. <laughs> it's not going to do it. So let's see. And it, they'll move. It'll move at different rates, and it'll do some things at different rates. And you don't want to. You don't want to mess with that. So turn Sculptures Pro back on. I always use Dynamesh. I'm going to have to try this instead. Yeah. I, yeah. Give it a go. I like it a lot. Um, some people say it's kind of. It's a little hard to uh, control. So just practice and you'll get there. Because it does, it, it's very easy to introduce what I call warbles, like lumps and bumps. It's very easy to do that. So you want to use your smooth brush a lot and don't go too, don't go higher density than you need to. Okay, let's get uh, let's get his lower lip in here. I'm just using inflate 
inflate that lip out. And also make sure you're looking at your model from all sides. See how it's, it's really easy, like I said, to introduce warbles. Let's see here. I made his bottom lip too too massive. Uh, where do you find your good stylized concepts? Hard to find. Uh, Pinterest is usually how I find my concepts. You can just you just fall down that rabbit hole that Pinterest is. You start to find uh, concepts that you like, and it will suggest more that are similar to the ones you found, and you just keep going. And once you get a good board put together, it's quite simple to find some good ones that will suggest them to you. Oh my gosh. Turn Sculptress off for a second. I wish I could pull the corners of the mouth back a little bit more, but I'll just deal with it. I can't because these eyes are in the way. <laughs> yeah, Pinterest can be dangerous. You can get lost, just like in those like YouTube shorts or TikTok videos, just scroll and just keep watching for hours. <laughs> I just installed Rush's interface that quick. I'm committed to learning ZBrush. Nice. You are welcome. I also teach an online course, Perry, if you're interested. Um, yeah, there's hours and hours and hours of content in there. Cover, covering the entire process of taking a character uh, all the way to game character and or 3D printed character. See, there you go. See how it's it's starting to make these weird surface things happen? And that's because of the density of the mesh. So I'm just gonna lighten up this density a little bit and just equal it out. Let me just mask this off and do it here first. Whoops. You just don't want to have big a big density difference between the two. I agree, swoon. But it is when if you get sucked in, it's a time sink for sure. You lost some pictures too easily. I have to be careful. <laughs> awesome. And if you, I think you can look me up on Pinterest, Shane Olson Art. I have a few, uh, a few boards that will get you started if you want to look at those. Okay. I'm just going to grab this color just for fun. Maybe right here. Get it going. Little blue guy. Gotta get his ears and horns and, and all these accessories. Um, where can you find the full process of creating? Um, if you're asking about, I have I have it on my website. 3dcharacterworkshop.com You can check out the, the course where I cover the whole thing. And it's not free, just so you know. It's but it's way, way cheaper than going to, say, a university or a tech school. All right, I'm 
just going to paint whoops, this. Let's try one more time because I want to kind of get it going like this and then thin out right there. While we come back with the other blue. Caricature Sandra Cluso post nine. Oh, are you talking about the the 007 Sean Connery? Yeah, I check those out. They're pretty wild. This cheek is really weird the cheek coming in and then going underneath the eye let's finish my one year study it was three thousand per session the only advantage is you're forced to do it full time yeah i agree with you yeah yeah and the network of people that you meet in university but the cost of my course is one third of that per for the entire every for everything you get everything which i have one course that's 66 hours worth of content i don't recommend you can and you can watch it on high speed um, it's something that i live streamed to just my students a while back taking a character all the way through to a game character but just that one course alone is pretty significant And I'm working on another one that uh, takes you all the way through to a 3D printed character, like a toy. Did you get a chance to check out my dad? No, but I've been seeing characters by like uh, my, my friend Dylan Ekron worked on that. Um, so I, I really need to watch it. Looks great. He's an incredible character modeler. I don't think I can have these puffy cheeks like I usually do. I'm gonna see what happens if I crease back further. I usually don't make my mouths like this, but this is a unique case. I'd imagine if you're this reachable on a free live stream that you're also reachable to answer questions. Yes, yes, there's a, um, there's a private Discord and a private forum, and I'm on there often. And there's also other students on there. There's And there's a lot of active students. There's uh, sculpt rooms on the private Discord that you can join and hang out and sculpt with other people. And I'm actually working on a brand new platform that I'm gonna be moving everything over to soon that's a lot more it's a lot easier to navigate and find where everything is yeah there's some students in here watching uh you can ask them if they like it Yeah, that's a little better for that mouth. I don't, I wish I could wrap it around a little more, but that's okay. I also have some plans to teach some other software as well. Hopefully soon. Okay perhaps love it <laughs> uh, thanks guys you're the best I have the best students just so you guys know best students super helpful very knowledgeable okay I want to get a tongue in there just to have something to react to if you grab a color uh, before you insert a mesh, um, you 
you when you draw out that object it will be that color and if you're wanting to grab a color from your spotlight image here um, you need to make sure your ring is showing um, and then you can hit C as in cat on your keyboard and if you hover you'll see that all these colors are changing based on where my cursor is um, and then you just let go you don't have to click you just let go um, and then hide the ring again and then yeah you can draw it up thank you Eric yeah Eric's amazing you've come a long ways it's been fun to watch not gonna lie <laughs> Polypaint is indeed on. This is Polypaint. Okay, and then I can split unmasked points, which will put it into its own subtool. Oh, welcome. You like it, huh? I always wonder. I always wonder if people like it or not. Had complaints just earlier today, and then other people like it. Yeah, I need to get the horns and everything on there, then it'll look less like Squirtle. Could you export polypaint in Substance from Armistead? Yes, Oliver, you actually bake those maps, and that is something I do cover in my course, is how to bake the maps. I use, um, you can use several different uh, software to do that. Um, but I teach specifically how to do it in Marmoset Toolbag because I believe that's my that's the best at baking maps at the moment. Substance also bakes maps really well, and I do cover that as well. Um, but you bake you bake from your high resolution model to your low resolution model if you're making a game character. Are you tracking your real hands or the pen core? So it's it's actually sim more simple than that. Um, it's it's just a green screen behind this screen, so it actually looks like this. See the screen, and it's tracking that. So that's behind my ZBrush, and then I'm just knocking out the knocking it out behind behind there. So, um, hey Wilbur. I'm also part of the program, still learning, trying my best. You're getting there too, man. I like, yeah, my favorite, Wilberth, is your most recent one. That girl's turned out great. Love to see my students level up. Okay. Crank this up one more. I also been thinking about something lately and I, I'll just since I have you all here I'll just bounce this idea off of you just for fun I have this um, I do have a well a secret mentoring program that uh, I like to mentor some students and, and some of the guys in here are in that program and um, I was thinking about putting up all of my my technical course teachings for free on YouTube I've been thinking about that and then I'm just focusing on the mentoring side of it for the paid stuff. And I don't, and I'm trying to learn, or trying to learn. I read, I read <laughs> somebody else's thing. Rather than selling all the, the technical stuff in the course, you know, as well. Because my philosophy is, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again, but my philosophy is um, it's kind of like music. Learning art is, well, music is art to me. And when you're learning a musical instrument, once you learn how to read music, you, you know how to read music. And that's um, kind of the artistic part and you know learning how to jam and riff and all that stuff um and then you can just learn different instruments and the instruments are the technical part so a, 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 a note c like this the, the note c is the same on a tuba as it is on like a guitar a c is a c an a is an a right 
Um, and it kind of goes the same with sculpting or art in general. Once you know anatomy, you know anatomy, right? Um, but the technical, like the software changes and it's technical. So once you know anatomy, you can take that knowledge into any software program. So the anatomy is uh, the, the art artistic part and like knowing shape language and knowing how to create appealing characters. Once you know how to create appealing characters, you can do it in any software, typically. Software is the technical part. Is that important to learn to work with tablet from the start to not struggle? Um, I mean, a tablet helps a lot because it has pressure sensitivity like this. Um, I'm just I'm just softly pressing in here to create some shadow. And if I was trying to do this with a mouse, a mouse is just on or off. So then you would have to be up here uh, messing around with the intensity if you're using a mouse rather than like lightly pressing instead of um, using the pressure. Okay, let's get these horns in there. So it's been an hour. This is where we're at. Um, let's, let's kind of assess a little bit. I, I do want to curve his back a little bit more. Get him kind of curved more. Um, yeah, you can use a mouse for hard surface, for retopology, for um, rigging, all of those things that do not require pressure sensitivity. But for example, let me just show you one example. Okay, if you grab a brush like this, and if you're trying to go from, from soft to hard to soft again, you cannot do that with a mouse. You just can't. It's, it doesn't work, right? So if you, if you find yourself doing strokes like that quite a bit, um, use a, t a tablet. It doesn't have to be an expensive tablet. Just any tablet with pressure sensitivity is all you need. Right, a tablet's like 50 bucks on Amazon. There you go, you know. But everything else, like your move brush and even, you know, you don't, you don't need to have pressure sensitivity to use a move brush. It's only specific cases. You don't need a screen tablet either. Yep, a pen tablet works just... So I, I used a pen tablet, not a screen tablet, for the first, I'd say, 15 years of my career. I've only been using a, a, a screen tablet for the last, oh, I'd say, eight years. Hey, Pradeep, I'm doing well, thanks. Welcome to the stream. Bought it into us four. Ten years ago for drawing, but modeling with the mouse still. Yeah, don't... I mean, do do whatever you want, but my suggestion is to force yourself to use a tablet just so you get the pressure sensitivity. Yeah, you know, the tech hasn't really changed that much. They keep touting more and more levels of pressure sensitivity, but... And I think the touch is just kind of a gimmick. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge for stylized versus non-stylized? Um, well, with stylized... You have to keep your surfaces super clean. And so the cleanliness is difficult with stylized characters. It looks easy, but when in practice it's not. Uh, like, like Hulk says, you're exposed like a nerve when you're doing stylized characters. Everything's showing. You can't really hide anything. With, uh, s with realistic characters, um, you can hide stuff. You can hide lumps and bumps behind textures. And that's not to say realistic character artists are trying to hide stuff. I'm just saying it's a little more forgiving. Um, but you also have to think about design and things too. And you tend to use a lot more reference when you're doing realism. Um, just to nail the, the likeness. And um, you're also getting into like 
much more detail, so you have to spend more time with texturing and surface detail than you would on a stylized character. The stylized, you're spending more time, again, with the design and keeping everything clean and uniform and that kind of thing. So, okay, I'm going to put a dark blue. I should give him t his teeth. Thanks, Perry. Yeah, once I get the this uh, beige color on the bottom down here, give him his ears and horns and, and wings and these little spikes down his back and fingers and toes, you know, all the things. <laughs> he'll, get, he'll get a lot closer. So you just poly paint for stylized or you do you texture it in substance or both? Both can be good. Yep, both can be good. Typically, for my characters, I s just tend to stay with poly paint and then just render it out in Redshift or whatever, you know? Um, but if I'm doing like a game character and it needs to have more detail, like, um, like say if you're doing a character for Overwatch or something like that, you'll need to take it into Photoshop or Substance or something like that to make it more detailed character or more detailed higher resolution texture work. Okay. Here's some great questions, guys. Keep them coming. Okay, so on this, these horns, let me kind of do them in a different way. And I'm going to uh, split unmasked points. And then I'm going to use the bend curve modifier just to kind of get them. Oops, I don't mean to spin it. This one. Just to bend. Get them bent. Get bent. <laughs> bumps and bumps, sometimes good in realism for skin details, you know. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, you still have to um, you still have to uh, think about the surface. And keep it clean. Keep things clean. Dance queen. Speak Turkish? I don't know any Turkish. Okay, so when you're done with this, but I have friends in Turkey, and it's I, my heart is with what's happening in Turkey right now. Just, oh my gosh. Um, you always pick the funnest character sculpt. Thank you. I love, yeah. I, I, I tend to pick characters based on if they make me laugh or not. Um, what's your favorite new feature of 2023? Um, uh, I'd probably say the, the, the Sculptress Pro stuff and of course Redshift. I have two favorites, Redshift and, uh, being able to turn down Sculptress Pro density more and be able to eye drop it. Both suggested by me, by the way. <laughs> I'm so happy for Maxon to put those in. Makes my life easier. Um, are artists going to be replaced by AI? What do you think? I, um, I, I just want to wait and see on that. I don't think so because, you know, I don't, I don't think art directors want to deal with trying to get what they need out of doing prompts. I think they'd rather talk to a person and get what they need that way. I mean, could you imagine doing that Harry Potter game with AI? I don't think it would work at all now or ever just my just my thoughts <laughs> the reason a beautiful simple two art will be phased out i don't yeah i don't I have no idea no idea okay. 
yeah i think it i think it's good as like uh trying to give people some ideas you know to work from um but as far as like a total production replacement i don't see it maybe very few instances but I'm going to fill these horns with a lighter color, maybe a more medium. Yeah, clip art. Yeah. Yeah, it's the use of quickly generating ideas. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, there's some things that I've seen the AI stuff do that I would never think of myself. So, it's kind of, I'm actually excited for that. It's like new, fresh ideas that maybe people would never think about, right? Um, that part I'm excited about. But like completely replacing artists, I don't know that that could happen or will happen. I don't know. Maybe for specific use cases, but I don't know. Um, the lizard, it's a, it's an overlay called the, uh, called spud arm. It's a actual arm that I modeled and it's just an overlay in OBS. I think this stream has had the most people asking about the arm <laughs> and that's okay. It's just funny. Okay. Let's see. Um, how much money does it cost if somebody sends you a character like this one? I, I don't really do freelance. Um, and it depends on the use of it, like what the people want to use it for. And then if it's just like going to be used in 3d printing or a game character or something like that, it all depends on what I'm going to be, what they're going to be using it for. So I don't, I don't really have a, an answer for that. Not a, not a good answer anyway. Okay. So for example, like this, I can hold down shift just to turn on a uh, sculptors pro. I can click on this subdivide size, drag it down and it turns into a picker. I can let go. And now it's the same density. Although I kind of wanted a little, a little more. There we go. A lot of companies have their own AI models train their models using data from all their work. Yeah, I could see that too. It's cool. I was curious because I thought I saw you holding it in real. Nope, nope. It's, it's just a digital overlay. Nothing too fancy. Okay, let's get some eyes in here. To get the eyes in there, it all just all of a sudden makes him funny. I'm gonna actually fill this and his eyeballs with uh, this the toy material. Hey, I'm part of the course. When is the next portfolio or sculpt review? What you, what I usually do is um, we do the monthly um, monthly challenges, and I will do a live uh, at the end of the the challenge. I'll typically review the challenge entries. But if you specifically need a, a portfolio review, like want me to look at your whole portfolio, um, maybe send me a message in the private discord. 
I can take a look for you if you want. See these warbles happening right here? It's so easy to overlook them. And it will be so much stronger of a character if you spend the time to t get rid of all of those little lumps and bumps. Make it super clean. Mini, 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 Mao. <laughs> Guess how's back. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Sorry, I probably read that wrong. Okay, let's uh, fill this with material. And to do that, I just, I just pick my paintbrush, change this to material, go over here and select, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu, where is it? Toy plastic. Okay, see this this highlight right here? Okay, and then I hit fill object. And we'll grab this little eye and do the same thing. Fill object. And then turn off, turn it back to RGB and switch back to the skin shade four. And now we have some highlights, but they're kind of pixelated. So what you can do is go crank up the subdivision levels a little bit. One. Um, how you actually flip something, let's say I make something, I duplicate it, but then I need to flip it. You just go to deformation and use mirror. Um, what material do you use? I, I use skin shade four for the most part, unless it's eyes, then I use toy. Um, you only see a login button. You, you have to purchase the course to get access to the private discord and the private forum and the course. Do not here. Let me show you. So if you go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, right here, this button right here, learn more about the workshop, that's the one you need to click on to, to buy it. I need to, I need to make that more clear, I guess. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you go to, um, so Subtool Master, that will mirror it and duplicate it. So if you want to just mirror it, then you have to go down to deformation right here. And there's mirror right there. And that will just take it from one side and flip it to the other side if that's what you're looking for. But under uh, Z plugin, there is a subtool master and there's mirror right here. And that will actually take one side and, and mirror it to the other, not flip it, but mirror it. Okay, I need some more volume in these horns. Oh, that's not what I want, I want fleet. Okay. And let's get his little ears in there, his little cute ears. Let's see, I'm trying to think about how I want to make those ears. Because they're kind of like a folded piece of flesh. And there's so many different ways I could do it. Hi Silver, I cannot speak French, I apologize. I think on YouTube you can actually turn on translate and you can see what I'm saying. Not that you can understand what I'm saying now. 
Is that your own made brushes and do you possibly sell them? They are my own made brushes and I don't sell them. I give them away for free. You can find those over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Here, I'll just show you guys where to get them. Um, so if you go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and you go down, you can find them right here. This blue, this blue area. And it comes with my user interface, my brushes, and my ruler file. Lurksa, welcome. I have to check this out. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Okay, let's try this. I think a lot of times I just kind of arm strong it. Your UI is compatible with 2023? Yep. I'm, if you could see it, you can't really see it, but this is 2023. And um, even if you download it and it says 2022, just put it in the proper folder uh, matching 2023 and it works great. Um, are those your 3D scopes in your background? Yes, they are. Uh, hey Shane, is it possible to retopo perfectly in ZBrush itself? Yes, just by adjusting some settings. You don't have to really adjust any settings. There's two ways to do retopology. You can use the um, topology brush to do it. It can get kind of messy um, and it's kind of hard to edit, but it's possible. And the other way is to use the Z modeler brush right here and um, X like um, extrude out edges and it will snap to the surface. So it's a, it's kind of slow and tedious, but it works. Currently developing 3D skills at the moment. Awesome. Did you learn to draw before learning to sculpt in ZBrush? I mean, I've drawn for since I was little in, in high school and, and stuff, but um, I don't really draw that much anymore. So, I mean... Again, I think all skills, all art skills are relatable. They all relate, so everything helps. Like if you if you learn anatomy when you're drawing, you're going to be able to translate that knowledge into sculpting, for example. But uh, do you need to learn how to draw? No. It's kind of like, do you need to learn how to play bass before you learn how to play guitar? Not really. Does it help? Sure. Have you ever used Maya? Yes, I used Maya for the for the for 15 years of my career. Um, if so, what do you like more with Zero? So they're two different programs. They don't do the same thing. It's kind of an apples and oranges comparison. Uh, Maya is a 3D modeling program, and this is a digital sculpting program. So you can't really sculpt in Maya, and you can't really model in Z. I mean, you can, but it's not really meant for that. There you go. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, search for uh, Michael Pavlovich Z modeler edge extrude retopology technique. There you go. Thank you. Um, it's weird. I can't do 2D at all, but 3D I do amazing. Yeah, it's it's all a matter of like how how your brain interprets 3D versus 2D. So Toppy, the thing is, I can't really talk about other software on this channel because this is you're watching the official Maxon channel. So I I like to stick with uh, talking about Maxon products. Hope you can understand. So I can talk about Cinema 4D, ZBrush, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, run some Sculptress Pro across this. What do you think about CGMA? I think they have some great courses, but uh, I haven't taken any of them myself. But I know a lot of the instructors, and I know they're great. That's yeah. I don't really have too too much uh, experience with them, so I can't really talk. 
to the quality of their instruction. Whoa. Okay. You know what's cool is with this um, with this picker in Sculptress Pro, the geometry does not have to be Sculptress Pro geometry. I can hold down shift, click on this subdivide, drag it down, and I can pick it from like this area right here, and it will make the density try and match that, which is great. I haven't seen Ashley. Um, yes, she does. She's having some medical issues at the moment with her eyes and long COVID and stuff. So hopefully she'll be back soon. She's doing okay. What exactly is Sculptress Pro? It's dynamic topology. That's all it is, dynamic topology, which means it subdivides the topology as you sculpt. Um, how do you have a model tan in front of the sculpture? It's, a, it's an overlay for OBS called Spud Arm. Around what age did you start learning 3D art? Gosh, how old was I? 90s. I was it, it was the year 1996 is when I started. Okay, I'm just going to kind of sculpt this by hand. I kind of fold this over and just kind of Ashley said she's going to stream this Wednesday, usual time. Awesome. Yeah, I'm 50 now. Well, 51. So I guess I'm 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 not very good at the math, the maths. Come on, do the thing. There we go. Um, is there any way to, s to make the mesh transparent to see the background as you sculpt? You're crushing these rapid fire questions. <laughs> um, so to see the background, are you talking about this character up here or the, or the gray background or what do you? So there's a couple ways. There's this transparent, which will uh, kind of make the model transparent except for the object you're working on. So that's one way. Um, and then this is actually a floating image. So if I turn on, if I hit Z or Z, I can go grab this ring and over here is opacity and I can turn the opacity up and down on that and then drag it over the top of my character so I can check proportions and things like that. Sometimes I'll do that. Hopefully that answers your question. I'm not. I'm using a Wacom tablet, uh, 20, 27 inches, dragon heart string. Quite supple. <laughs> Sorry, I've been playing a lot of Harry Potter. I recently downloaded your UI. It's comfortable, but I'm unable to get the menu you get while doing the mirror weld. Um, so you need to set a hotkey. Inside of the readme file are instructions on how to set the hotkey. So you should see the menu up here. This is the menu. It's called the 3D Character Workshop menu. I don't think you can see it here. There you go. It's right up here. Can you see that? 3D Character Workshop. And you have to hold down Control plus Alt, I believe, to, and then you touch number two on your keyboard, not your num, not your numpad, just your keyboard, and it will set the hotkey. And then what I do is under my um, tablet settings, I set my back pen to be the number two on my keyboard, and that way, no matter where I'm at with my mouse, uh, my mouse, my cursor, it will pop the menu up underneath that. So that's how you get the menu to, to show up. But again, there are, there are instructions in the readme file that came with it. Um, I do not do commissions. Um, I 
I teach people how to do it so they can do it on their own. That's my, that's my thing. So I teach the 3D character workshop and I've done, I've taught, taught it for five years now. And it's crazy because there's about, there's over 2000 students that have purchased that course. I think it's getting closer to 2,500 now. That blows my mind. I appreciate all the support, everybody. <laughs> I don't know what curvy 3D is. Sorry. Okay. I'm just going to grab, see this little warble right here? Just those little tiny things drive me crazy. Okay, so now I'm going to make a, the eye lash. I'm going to grab the dark blue from it. Whoops. It's like a green. There we go. Right there. It's kind of, still kind of green. There we go. I've never heard of that one. I've used a lot of uh, 3D programs, including VR programs, but I've not heard of that one. Okay, so the topology brush, I'm just going to draw a line that's gonna represent that line above the eye, the eyelash. Do a second one. And then just crisscross it here and there to make little squares all the way along. like that and then hold down alt and drag on the surface to clean up all of the ends and then the the brush size will determine the thickness of the eyelash i'm just going to tap on the surface and it'll give me a new object and then i'm going to split unmasked points and it will give me this object and now i can turn on dynamic subdivisions i gotta arrow down to get make sure i'm on the actual eyelash. Let me turn that on. And I'm going to turn off. I'm going to uncrease all. There we go. Okay, let's see. Uh, thank you, Neil. Of course, it's worth every penny. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, any brushes you recommend when blocking in muscles and bulky characters like biceps? Clay buildup messes up my shape. I don't use clay buildup, honestly. Um, a lot of people do. I use clay buildup is more of like an experimental brush when you're blocking out shapes in more of a traditional sculpting way. Um, I just use primitive objects to block out my muscles. Um, is this a character from a game show, a game or a show? No. When I clicked the stream, I first thought it was a fan from Fakemon. No, I I don't know. I this is just from uh, an artist that I found on ArtStation called his name is Alexander Keda, and this is the actual image. I just pulled this little dragon from Mother of Dragons <laughs> from from this. Uh, some amazing amazing art here. Some great concepts. So yeah, I just grabbed that one. How often do you stream? I stream every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific time here on this same channel. And you can also catch me, I'm going to start streaming here and there on my own channel, which is 3D Character Workshop on, on YouTube. So if you want to subscribe for that to that, um, I should be streaming fairly, fairly soon. I want to. I'm just trying to work out my setup because I think I might be streaming with my iPad. So got to get that worked out. Okay, just got to finish up this ear here. Uh oh. Come on. No! Seabrush crashed. There's my green screen. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Oh, how I hope it saved. Da, 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 da. Sorry, one second. I'm going to minimize this for a moment. Um, so it's not green in your face. I don't know what I did to crash it. That was crazy. And 
it doesn't crash too often during my stream, but sometimes it does. Knew you'd seen me before. <laughs> yeah, I've I've streamed quite often. Okay. Every Monday for the past four years, I think. Uh, 27. Let's see how far back it saved. Hopefully not too far. Ah, looks like I have to make the eyelashes and the ear again. <laughs> oh goodness, okay. That's okay, I'll do it quickly. There, let's bring this back. All right, we're back in action. We're back in action. Sometimes that happens. So your vid from eight and seven years ago. Holy cow. Uh, when you find a cool design from another artist you want to make, do you have to ask them or is it okay as long as you, the rightful credits? Um, you should ask them. You should. So um, I highly recommend give, getting permission from them. Like I reached out to this artist and asked him if I could do these. And so I got permission first. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let's get, let's do this again. And hopefully I can make the ear very quickly since I've already made it before. Thank you, Sky. Welcome, welcome. Okay, I'm going to concentrate for a second and just make this ear and just bust it out. What if you can't find the original artist? Um, yeah, then just give credits as best as you can. Uh, just, just don't. If it's not yours, don't sell it. You know, don't, don't. My, that's my advice. Don't try and make money off of it. Like, don't try to sell prints or STLs or anything if you don't own the license to it. Sorry, I'm going to just kind of bust through this really quick so we can play some catch up back to where we were. Get that ear shape going. How did you learn to 3D model? Well, I've been I've been 3D modeling professionally for over 22 years, I think. I think it's been that long. Okay, and then go I scoped on X pen 22 pro what do you suggest I should use for the button on the tablet or the keyboard um just it doesn't it doesn't really matter as far as which button you use just as long as you find one that's comfortable for you um like if if the uh, tablet has buttons itself, you can assign the menu to one of those buttons and it would work just great. Actually making this, you know, it's sometimes when, when things crash or you have to do it again, most likely you'll do it better the next time. So sometimes crashing and losing stuff isn't always a bad thing. So I was just noticing how this folds over just the front. I like that better. What app do you do this on? This is called ZBrush. Um, what about you? I Again, I have my menu uh, hotkeyed to number two on my keyboard. 
and then I map it to the back button of my pen. And the reason I have my user interface looking the way it does and bringing everything up to the front is because I, uh, I like to put my Cintiq down in my lap and use very little of my keyboard as possible. Sometimes I like to tuck my keyboard away. Um, so the, that's, that's kind of how I like to do it. And that's why my user interface looks the way it does. And that's why I made the menu. Um, so I can just, just use a few buttons on my, on my left hand hotkeys and then use the rest, uh, by accessing it with my pen. Nice UI. You're welcome. And again, I give this away for free. My u my user interface and my brushes, you can go grab them over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I know it's kind of hard to find. I'm I'm hopefully changing that very soon. So keep an eye out. Downloading the brushes will put you on my emailing list and so that, which I don't use very much. I always wondered that because sometimes I feel weird about it. Thinking it's rude to just pop in on some artist message and be like, hey, can I make... You know, usually they're flattered. Usually they're flattered. So, um, yeah, don't don't worry about asking them. And then if they don't respond, don't bother them, though. You know, don't, don't be that... Don't be that person that just bugs them. Because if they're busy and they don't really want to respond, then, then just don't... Don't bug them. What am I making? I'm making this little dragon. There we go. The ears are kind of bent the opposite way though. <laughs> now let's uh and I want to I'm gonna put oh, I'll just mask it off. What's the dragon for? Uh, nothing in particular. I just found the concept and I'm like, hey, that looks like something fun to, to sculpt. So I reached out to the artist and said, hey, do you mind if I sculpt some more of your sculpts or some more of your concepts? And he's like, yeah, it's great. So that's what I'm doing. Time. Sorry, sometimes if I'm sculpting I'm by myself and not streaming, I'm singing. <laughs> I'm a child of the 80s, so I'm usually listening to 80s music. Right now I'm listening to In Excess. Mm -hmm. Do you want to make it kind of curve like this in the back? Okay. Let's give them those little digits, those little fingers. Ugh. Thanks for the kind words, Brad. I really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. I love Brad's stuff. He's really, really leveled up since he first started. <laughs> so fun to see. Hey, Brad, would you mind posting a link to your Instagram if you could? You're over on uh, YouTube, aren't you? I don't know that you can. Now I'm going to save this. 
my lesson. But if you want to um, post it over on Twitch, you're welcome to. I'm so happy I caught this. I'll be signing up for your class in March. Awesome. Very cool. Again, a new platform is coming that I'm super duper excited about, which will make it, it it's actually going to have a free section where anybody can join. Really excited about that. Um, should I reach out to the artist before referencing his concept? I mean, I just do it and mention the artist when posting my work. Um, it's, it's better practice to actually reach out to them beforehand and ask if you can do it because sometimes um, it's already been bought and purchased as a license and they they don't want you to sculpt it I've I've had very rare occasion but that's the case ah, doesn't look like it's fixed what's going on dynamic there it goes. Okay, dynamic was on. Ah, there we go. All right. Like, well, they didn't fix it, but the way they did, they just added a button called dynamic and then fixed it. Thanks, Brad. Or thanks, Neil. There you go. Check out Brad's work. He's super prolific. Okay, let's see. Now I don't want to pose these hands just yet. <laughs> Those hands are fun. Okay, let's give him little feeties. Little feeties. My watch is telling me I need to stand up. Oh. Turn off local for a minute. Can we get a Hogwarts? You want to watch me play Hogwarts? I've thought about it. I've also thought about streaming uh, Valheim. I play a lot of Valheim. My friends. I've thought about it. I don't know. I'm just not that big of a gaming streamer I don't think I don't know how well it would do <laughs> could be kind of fun yes I do have a quote-unquote secret accelerator program which is essentially just uh, group coaching and I, I don't really talk about it that much because I can't take on very many students at once because of the nature of it but I might be opening it back up soon. If you're interested, um, send me an email at shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and ask me about it. I can give you some more information, I'll let you know when I'm opening it up again. Bend this tail. Oops. Just want to make sure I got everything. <laughs> Alex, yeah. That'd be kind of fun, huh? Okay. I'm going to bend this portion down a little bit. <laughs> this looks funny with no no body, no no face. <laughs> and he's a lot skinnier than I have him.
What happened to him? I just hid, I, I hid a portion. Yeah, like I can hide bits and pieces. Hide, hide, hide. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. He's like, me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we're getting close to time. Let me let me just quickly paint the uh let's see. Let me go Sculptress Pro. Mm, maybe this density here. I want to paint the colors on him. Yeah, he's a bit chunky. A little chunky. Kind of makes him cuter though, doesn't it? Come on. Can I not? Sculptress. I mask it accidentally there it goes okay okay that is something that's new you used to not be able to use sculptures pro on hidden objects um why is it green that is just poly groups it helps me select different pieces of the mesh yeah okay let's let's get his uh well let's do these feet first there we go. All directions. What's a polygroup? It's just a a temporary color that helps you select objects. Okay. Let's go. Make sure we're on RGB. Okay. Plan to retop? No. Um, I usually do these characters for 3D printing, which does not require retopology. I do cover retopology in my course, but I usually don't do it here during the live stream because it's not, it's just not that entertaining to watch, to be honest. Okay, I'm going to flip this all the way around so I can get a good arc. Let me turn off. Well, I'll leave Sculptress on. Doesn't matter. Painty paint. Don't forget his. L oh yeah, it's his little tooth. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put one on each side. Actually, I think he's got one on the other side. You just can't see. Okay. I still need, I gotta, I gotta put his, uh, eye, his eyelash back in too, that didn't get saved. Will you just decimate it later? Yes. For 3D printing. Yep. Directions. Okay. I think it's about right here. Let's try that. I'm trying to hurry because I don't have too much time. I usually stream until uh, 2 o'clock my time, which is 1 p.m. Pacific time. So I usually stream for two hours. I try to get as much done in those two hours as I can. This might be a stupid question, but do you do your printed models come with color or do you hand paint them later? I... Uh, there are ways to print in full color and those printers are very expensive. And there's also some that print in like a, they kind of fuse pellets together. And the result is kind of like a, like a sugar topper for a cake. That's kind of what it resembles. But I usually print in resin, which gives a very, very smooth result. But after the fact, I will, uh, I will I'll hand paint them. Just like you would hand paint uh, miniature figures for role-playing games. 
time is it? It is uh, 1.57 p.m. Thanks, Oliver. Appreciate it. I try. <laughs> Let's see here. We played around with your USB charged airbrush. I haven't, Leonard. I really, really need to. I've just been so focused on that new platform I've been working on that I just haven't had the chance. I really need to. It's sitting right here. If you guys wonder what Leonard's talking about, I've showed it in the stream before. So let's go full cam on this. Hi. So see this check it out this is just a it's battery powered you plug it in USB-C right here and then you just put the paint in here and you can make gradients with this this was it's meant for like uh, airbrushing fingernails um, yeah it's it's got a built-in battery right right here and um, so this is this is my little uh, Grogu that I 3d printed and started to paint I still need to paint his eyes but yeah, this is kind of uh, one of the ones I've hand painted. Um, anyway, yeah, and you can. I I need to paint a bunch of these. the The cowboy has his arms laying on the on the ground, so I can paint them before I put them together. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thanks for the Dorito. Okay. How can we join perfectly in ZBrush itself in order to print? Um, there's two ways. Uh, I used to use Dynamesh all the time to do that, but now I use uh, Remesh by Union. And that makes a clean, uh, they call it watertight mesh. So you can make a, m join all your objects that way to make it watertight. Just got to make sure that your objects are actually overlapping each other so there's no space. Um, do you print articulated models? Not not necessarily, but sometimes I'll put keys in them. Like you can see, again, that cowboy back there, he's got keys. So I can glue them together, but he's not articulated. You can't really pose him. Um, oh, you just broke out your airbrushes again? Nice. That's fun. That's fun. How do you remesh by union? It's under the gizmo menu. So if you have the gizmo right here and you go to this gear, it's right here, remesh by union. Um, if you watch this video back, um, it will be up on the Maxon's YouTube channel. If you watch it back, you'll see me remesh this by union uh, when, I, when I stitch the objects together. What's the difference between remesh by union and Dynamesh? Uh, Dynamesh uses a voxel technology where re remesh by union will just stitch it together with triangles. R only, only where the objects intersect each other, where Dynamesh will rebuild your entire mesh. And I'm painting, I paint here, I paint poly paint exactly how I would paint like with real paint. Same thing. Like I'll use airbrush for gradients, but I'll use a, a, a brush for solid colors. I'd like to know if you have a class strictly for 3D printing separate from the modeling one. I just got a printer for Christmas. 
I printed a few things, but I would like to learn how to break my models that are more complex for printing. I'm working on one right now, right now, and it it should be out. Oh gosh, I hope I hope very soon. I keep saying that, but I need to get to it. Um, I'm sculpting Lion-O from the Thundercats, and I'm taking it to 3D print, and I'm cutting it up like in specific parts, just like I did with this cowboy. And I'll teach you how to do that. And I'm going to sell that separate as a separate thing, as well as in a bundle with everything else. So if you if you purchase the 3D Character Workshop now with everything, you'll get it all uh, for what I'm selling it for now, rather than individual courses. Yeah, this isn't the exact color that I want. You can see some faceting down here. Smooth that out. Okay. I'm going to take out your Saturn 2 out of the box. <laughs> I don't know. It's still in the box. <laughs> Oh man, the guilt, the guilt is rich. <laughs> yes, yes, I want to, uh, that's part of the thing is to uh, take it all the way to print. So I'm just doing a gradient on the top of these horns right now. There we go. Boom, he's just missing his his wings and his eyelids, eyelashes, whatever you want to call them. All right, you guys, I think that's where I'm going to end it. I'll finish it up off stream and render it out in Redshift. But um, I just want to thank everybody so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, this has been a fun one. You've asked some really, really great questions. And... Uh, yeah, it kind of allowed me to talk about my course. Usually I don't talk about my course that much during my live stream, but thank you for asking about it. I really appreciate it. And if you want to learn more, go check out 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And uh, you can also grab my free brushes and free user interface there. Let me move this hand so you can see them. Let's put them in perspective. A little too, too much. There we go. Um, yeah, there's some, I need to squish his head and make his body a little smaller. And there's some posing I need to do for sure. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, so I teach how to do these uh, stylized characters over at the 3D Character Workshop. I show you how to take them all the way from nothing to uh, game character and 3D printed characters. So if you're interested, check it out, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful week, and I will catch you all next Monday. All right. And I always like to say, what do I like to say? <laughs> I just totally had a, it just left my brain. Uh, <laughs> anyway, have, have a great week, everybody. And we'll see you, see you next Monday. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.